The United States is pressuring Israel to review their military's rules of engagement when Israel already has stricter live fire protocols than America does. At the same time, the Palestinian Authority is officially returning to a policy of terrorism against Israel. Welcome to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of anti-Israel propaganda and Jew hatred, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Luke Hilton here with Joshua Waller in the studio on the Mount of Blessing in the biblical heartland of Israel. Guys, hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you haven't watched the Temple Mount series, episode one and two is out now. Check it out right here on the channel. Don't want to miss episode three coming this Sunday. Guys, we have less than two weeks to reach our goal of 3,000 trees, which we're planning to plant in October and November. That's just a couple of weeks away. We're over two-thirds of the way there, but we need your help to help us finish strong. You can go to greeningisrael.com or links down below. Help us plant trees in the biblical heartland of Israel by sponsoring one, two, five, ten, a hundred trees. Today, go to greeningisrael.com. One more thing, guys. We just harvested 25 tons of grapes with 150 volunteers that are from eight countries all over the world. That's happening right here in the land of Israel. And if you want to follow all of the photos, all of the videos, all of the updates, check out our other YouTube channel. It's the Hayovel Volunteer Channel. We'll put a link down below and go subscribe because we're posting videos nearly every day. Guys, the Palestinian Authority is officially uh, returning to terrorism against Israel. Let, let, let me, uh, that's what they would say. Let me just clarify. Officially returning to terrorism means they're at war with the one and only Jewish state of Israel. Now, I want to look at a few notes on this war, which means Israel's taking this seriously. And here is a few stats on Israel's war against the radical Islamist. This is from the uh, Sheen Bet uh, chief, Ronan Barr. Quote, we foiled 312 significant terrorist attacks, stabbing, shooting, suicide attacks, and have made 2,110 arrests. End quote. And all this just since January. Um, this sounds like a war against the Islamic Jihad, if anything. So it's true. Um... They're attacking Israel, and Israel is responding. A few more details on this. In 2020, there were only 19 hot weapon attacks, meaning lethal. 2021, there was 98, a major, uh, over that's quadrupling the attacks against Israel in 2020. 21. 2022, just, just since the beginning of the year, we've already seen 130 shooting attacks, and we're talking about towards the Israeli military. We're not talking about in public. Few of these were in public, uh, not many. Most of these are on uh, military uh, invasions into these areas to take out this uh, is, is radical Islamist regimes that have taken over many cities in the Judea and Samaria region. Those stats are from the military, 2020, 2021, 2022, an incredible uh, move up in the radical Islamist regime against the state of Israel. So the military has dealt with 130 shooting attacks just since the beginning of the year, and they're obviously pushing back. We had the opening of the Operation Break the Wave. The IDF is breaking that wave of terror uh, that is uh, trying to sweep over the nation of Israel. Uh, these are intense times, according to the uh, Sheen Bet, the quote again, we can say today without a shadow of a doubt, the political instability, the growing international uh, internal division are an encouragement to the axis of evil, to the terror organizations and to individual attackers. The political situation in Israel is not helping things. The nation is on the brink of fifth elections just since 2019. Uh, this is playing into the instability majorly, and the enemies of Israel are obviously using this to their advantage. Again, another thing to throw into this conversation, she, uh, noted by the Sheen Bet uh, chief, Ronan Barr, again, he notes that Hamas is desperately trying to take over the regions of Judea and Samaria from the Palestinian Authority. Now, Hamas uh, is... Obviously, they took over Gaza in 2007, and we've seen what happens from there. They would like to turn all of Judea and Samaria into a Gaza 
uh, full-on attack against Israel, and that's what they're aiming for. With the potential downfall of the PA, with the uh, Mahmoud Abbas aging, we could have a very sensitive situation on our hands. Um, also to note in this crazy times, as the IDF is preparing and is actively nearly every night going into these areas and taking out this uh, terrorist infrastructure. Uh, Hamas, as we mentioned, is trying to engage in these areas, as well as the Palestinian Islamic Jihad group. Um, one thing to note was also noted by the Sheen Bet uh, chief that uh, Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad are funded directly, most entirely funded, from no one other than Iran. Uh, this is very concerning. Most people are only concerned about Iran and a nuclear, as a nuclear power. Guys, it's not only time to, uh, to take the situation seriously with the nuclear situation. It's time to take a proxy war very seriously. Iran is throwing uh, thousands and millions of dollars into the regime, this proxy regime against the nation of Israel. And let me just tell you this, just as a reminder, if there is a... Um, a nuclear deal signed in the coming months. This will release billions of dollars into the Iranian regime, which in effect will end up right here at Israel's doorstep with its proxies, meaning let's just talk about July for one second. July saw 1,318 Palestinian national, national, nationalistic acts of terrorist uh, violence against Israel. Let me quote that again. 1,300 attacks against Israel just in July. Can you imagine with billions of dollars behind them what that would look like? You don't have to think too hard. Guys, it's time to stop this absolutely insane cycle of violence that's happening, that's being pushed by the, by the Iranian regime here by its proxies. And it's definitely time to tell the American and the Western world to have nothing to do with funding these kind of attacks against Israel. Let me note that those 1,318 attacks against Israel, this did not include rock throwings, which is one of the most uh, common occurrences here in Judea and Samaria. So all of that to note, things are, are a bit intense, and uh, thank God that the IDF is uh, taking this situation seriously, and as I said, nightly raids are happening. More on this in just a second. And two, I mean, you might listen to that and say, it's a war zone, right, in Judea and Samaria, which it's not, and like, but the the point to all of this is that the ID, the Israeli government is strengthening the IDF to take out terrorism at its roots inside the Arab towns in Judea and Samaria so that there aren't you know daily terrorist attacks against civilians and not in only Judea and Samaria but also in Tel Aviv and Jaffa and Haifa and Ashdod and uh, Ashkelon, things like this. So the, this is, uh, yes, there's increase in terrorism. Uh, Hamas, Fatah, now Fatah is officially returning to terrorism. We'll get to that in just a second, so hang on. Um, but thankfully, and thank God, the IDF is strengthened to root out terrorism where you know where it's at, especially at its heart. So they're going into Janine, going into Nablus, and going into these Arab areas so that they can take it out before terrorist attacks are happening. Um, Guys, if you want a practical way to invest in the families of Judea and Samaria, you look no further. Blessed by Israel was founded to allow people from all around the world to tangibly invest in the small family businesses in the biblical heartland of Israel. We're talking about olive oil, soap, honey, and lots more beautiful, amazing, incredible products. And each product represents a family living only in Judea and Samaria, and these guys are pioneers because the international community opposes just them living here. So actually thriving and having businesses, that's an incredible thing, and you guys can actually support them in that. That's why Blessed by Israel, that's Blessed B-U-Y Israel, is inviting you to join them in the Heartland Challenge. We are here in the Heartland. We're inviting you from wherever you're at in the world to join in the Heartland Challenge. Basically, you make a commitment to only use a certain product from a small business in Judea and Samaria. How can you do that? Isn't that hard? Absolutely not, because you make a commitment to only use olive oil from Judy and Samaria, or maybe your honey, or maybe your soap, and you can go to blessedbuyisrael.com, 
click the link in the description below and say, I'm only buying my honey from small businesses in Judea and Samaria. And when you commit to doing this, you're actively investing in the restoration of Israel and supporting the families in the heartland of Israel. Join the Heartland Challenge. Start making a difference today. Find out more to go to blessed buyisrael.com. Click the link below. Don't forget to use the code INVEST at checkout for $5 off your for first order. Join the Heartland Challenge today. Get your olive oil, your soap, your honey, whatever it is. Commit to using a product only from Judea and Samaria, blessedbyisrael.com. So talking about recent terrorist attacks. And like we said, yes, there are terrorist attacks that happen in Israel. We don't want you to think it's just happening on a daily basis because thankfully the IDF, they take care of things. Um, but a officer in the IDF, Major Bar Fala, uh, was killed in a gunfight with terrorists this week. This week, two terrorists opened fire on him. Thankfully, he and uh, his fellow soldiers were able to kill uh, or were able to take out both terrorists, but not before uh, Major Bar Fala was uh, killed himself. Ironically, one of the two terrorists was a member of PA Security Forces. Now, I want to mention something. PA Security Forces are funded by the U.S. and other international countries. They were trained by the U.S. and others. And their purpose under original agreements with Israel that allowed them to set up their own security force, their purpose is to keep violence and terrorism, like, stop it in Judea and Samaria and in Palestinian-controlled areas. What's happening now? Palestinian Authority security member, basically a PA policeman, opened fire on an IDF officer and killed him. He's a terrorist. Um, so yesterday, according to Palestinian Media Watch, Fatah, which is the PA is controlled by Fatah, which is a terrorist organization, uh, but basically they're like the moderates, right? And they're the ones in power at the Palestinian Authority. They released a video on their official Facebook page. Now, they've already taken the video down, but not before they made their point, because as you'll see in just a second, that's how they do things. They either say something in English, and then they say something different in Arabic, or they'll post something, and then they'll let everybody see it, and then they take it down so that the world thinks that, you know, they recanted or whatever. Three important parts to this video. One, they actually, and these, these are direct quotes from the video. One, the Al-Aqsa Palestine Martyrs Brigade is officially, re, uh, officially announcing its attacks. Two, the Fatah movement takes responsibility for the actions of its military arm, which is the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade. Three, the Fatah leadership announces that it is returned to the phase of the armed struggle, i.e. Fatah's euphemism for terror. Okay, so yes, they uh, announce this. Basically, what are they saying? So the, uh, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade is like a military violent wing of uh, the Palestinian Authority, but they've tried to, rem like, officially into the world, they want the wanted the world to believe that this Martyrs Brigade was, like, not really a part of Fatah, not really a part of the PA, PLO. They're like the extremist group, right? We don't associate with them. And the world bought the lie. Uh, sorry, but they weren't at all. They are an integral part of the Palestinian Authority, Fatah. And now the PA decided to throw away all pretense of them being separated from them at all and said the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade is officially announcing its attacks, basically against Israel. They take responsibility for the actions of the uh, Martyrs Brigade, and they have an officially announced that Fatah is returning to the phase of armed struggle. Armed struggle is another word for intifada, another word for terrorist attacks against Israel, another word for murdering Jews. To be clear, the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade is officially designated as a terrorist organization. And uh, the U.S. and a lot of other countries around the world, they've tried to differentiate between Fatah, the PA, and the, and the uh, Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade so that they could justify talking to Mahmoud Abbas for peace uh, talks, negotiations. But now they've made it officially clear that they're intrinsically linked together. Um, like I said, they removed a video pretty soon after it was published, um, but there is, the evidence is there. Palestinian Media Watch got a copy of the video. They'll be publishing that soon. We'll have links down to their website below. Um, but again, this is another tactic of the enemy, the Arab side that wants to kill Israelis and kill Jews. The tactic is say something violent in Arabic, say something nice in English. Publish a video, and then a day later, after everybody's watched it and gotten the idea, take it down and say, oh, we're sorry, we're actually peace-loving people. Sorry, but uh, it's time to see through the smoke screen for who they really are. And now they're officially returning to terrorism against Israel because 
They do this because they want the world to continue believing the lie. They want to continue receiving the millions and billions of dollars that the world funnels into Judea and Samaria to help the Palestinian cause when in actuality it goes to terrorism and violence. Luke, let's talk about that for a second, because we have America now funding the Islamic G Jihad that's going on in Israel to kill Jews. And we have right now, we have the U.S. ambassador uh, to Israel, Thomas Nides, that is here in Israel. He went on Israeli uh, radio uh, stating this, quote, the Palestinian Authority needs to do more in order to prevent violence. Now, he states this, but at the same time, there's this money flowing through his hands to the Amer through the American administration of which he represents to the Palestinian people that money is going from the Americans to the Palestinian Authority to the terrorists that are literally uh, killing Jews. That's what's happening. And they're being paid to kill Jews by the Americans. I want you to be very clear on this. This is what's happening. And uh, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Thomas Nides, uh, says we need to do more to stop it. Now, doing more to stop it would mean no more money until you stop. You don't just keep paying murderers. Well, yeah. To kill an ally. Like, I, I would, like, he goes on. There's another quote from him. He says, quote, We have a law which prohibits passing money to the Palestinian Authority so long as these payments continue. He's talking about the pay to slay program. We think they're not acceptable according to American law, and we pressure the Palestinian Authority every day to end them. Now, I want to call this out for what it is. Both of these statements, even when he says the PA needs to do more in order to uh, prevent violence, these are just words. These are only words, and that's it. The U.S. is not doing anything to stop the pay-to-slave policy. In fact, they're now giving money to the PA again, and they're not doing and and saying the PA is uh, needs to do more to prevent violence is like saying it's like saying ISIS needs to do more to prevent violence. I mean, you're talking about terrorists and terrorist organizations and people that call for terrorism and violence every single day. So unfortunately, even though the words sound nice, they mean absolutely uh, nothing. He literally just said, Luke, he recognizes that America is breaking its own laws. He says that we have a law against giving money, passing money to entities that promote terrorism, that pay terrorists. And yet he's still passing the money and they're still paying terrorists. You have to understand this. The world is going absolutely bonkers and yet the money still flows. Something majorly wrong with this scene. I want to read one more quote and it's from the U.S. Assistant Secretary for Near Eastern Affairs, Barbara Leaf. I don't know. I mean, I didn't know that position existed. But anyways, she said, quote, we're very, or quote, uh, we are, quote, very worried about the security situation in Judea and Israel. This worries Israel. I assume she meant Samaria. Uh, Judea and Samaria. This worries Israel and worries the Palestinian Authority. We are trying to make sure that the security coordination between the parties continues and that additional things are done to preserve the security coordination and improve it. I just want to point out, in case you didn't catch that, she just put the Palestinian Authority in Israel on an equal playing level. She says security coordination between the parties, that it continues. There is no security coordination between the parties of Israel and the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade when one of their own members just murdered an IDF officer. That's not security coordination. Um, unfortunately, the United States, even though they're trying to say the right words to where they back Israel, they mean nothing because they're putting a violent extremist terrorist organization on the same playing level as the most moral military in the world. Speaking of moral militaries, the U.S. also tried to call Israel out for their rules of engagement, right? Um, because, you know, the Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh was killed in May uh, in a firefight in Jenin. And after that long, drawn-out uh, investigation, and as a result, just a, a week or two ago, the, U the U.S. said that they wanted to review Israel's military rules of engagement. So what? And and there was a lot of backlash. And now the uh, State Department uh, is kind of backing off, saying, "No, we support Israel to do whatever they need to do." But why would the United States want to review Israel's rules of engagement in the first place? What are Israel's rules of engagement? Look, I started to look up Israel's live fire protocols. The actual protocols are classified, but we do know some things. Basically, IDF soldiers can use live fire to negate an actual and immediate threat to life. 
as the last option in the procedures for stopping a suspect, as well as in certain circumstances to contend with the threat to life posed during violent riots. Now, I just want to bring out the key phrase there, threat to life, immediate threat to life. Now, um, we might say that Israel's rules of engagement should be a little less strict because there would probably be less deaths here in Israel and less murders if they weren't so strict because we know situations where uh, it's so strict that uh, like Israeli soldiers are actually afraid to take the necessary steps to stop incidents and that's when people die. Right. Uh, possibly even the, uh, the, the major, the officer that was killed this week in a terrorist attack. Um, but as it stands right now, basically they're allowed to take action with live fire when there's an, an immediate threat to life. Now, Josh, you looked up the rules of engagement for the U.S. Marines. Well, I wanted to compare the two because if, if the U.S. is pressuring Israel to back off, then it must be pressuring Israel to do something that they do. Well, that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, American, I got this off of the Marine Student Handbook. When they're teaching Marines how to engage, this is what was right there in the book, uh, and I'll quote from the handbook. Uh, when hostile intent is present, the right exists to use appropriate force, including the armed force and self-defense by all necessary means available to deter or neutralize the potential attacker or, if necessary, to destroy the threat. That sounds like common sense to me. Why would America be pressuring an ally not to defend itself and to, to restrict action against enemies of the state? That's absolutely absurd. So America, yet its uh, restrictions here are very light when engaging with the military. They're going to pressure Israel to intensify. That makes no sense at all to me. It, it's, it's absolutely preposterous that America is going to pressure their ally to stand back. What do they want? More soldiers to be killed, more civilians to be killed by terrorists. And also, Luke, just to set the record straight, this is a horrible conversation to be having to start with. Why is America, we have a situation here where, where Israel is fighting terrorists, known terrorists. They're labeled terrorists throughout the modern world. And yet America goes to Israel to talk about their engagement laws when no recognition that we're talking about an enemy of the state that Israel is f fighting against for, it's a, in a fight for its life. And America is going to choose, instead of saying, go Israel, fight your enemies, take them out, deal with terrorism. As Americans, we support dealing with terrorism. We've had our share of terrorism affect our nation, and you deal with terrorists. You don't just let them continue going about terrorizing the world. Uh, at least at one point in America, we thought that. Uh, maybe things are changing, and it seems like they are. But that's ridiculous. It's absolutely insanity to treat terrorists as though they're the upper and to treat Israel as though they're the ones that need a lesson. This is a ridiculous conversation we're having. Uh, but even in to take the conversation and break it down, it's still absolutely insane that America would pressure Israel to lower their standard. Especially when seems, it seems like, as best we can tell, the U.S. military's rules of engagement are much more last, lax than Israel's. Yeah, yeah. Israel has the stricter ones, yeah, exactly. right? Which, I mean, maybe we would possibly agree with their rules of engagement because basically they have the right to take care of a threat, right? Uh, so when you're dealing with an enemy, we're not talking about civilian you know, life here. We're not talking about, uh, we're not talking about your everyday neighborhood getting robbed, you know, getting burgl burglarized, whatever. We're talking about wartime enemies, armed people, terrorists, right? Um, so the U.S. brought this up. They were pressuring Israel, and then they kind of re-nedged on the, the whole uh, uh, pressure because there was a lot of backlash here. Everybody in Israel was like, nope, we draw the line. We make our own rules of engagement because we know what we need to do to keep our people safe and alive. Um, but the question is, why is the U.S. bringing this up? And why are they comparing it? Because Israel is dealing with people who want to kill them. We're talking about a municipality, the Palestinian Authority, that teaches in their schools and teaches on their TVs and teaches in their mosques specifically how to go and kill Jews. The methods, they arm them, they fund them, they pay them when they're successful. They even pay them when they're not successful. If you tried to kill a Jew and you went to prison over it, even if you weren't successful, you still get put on the payroll. And Israel is dealing with these people that are every single day trying to kill them. And the U.S. is saying, we need to review your, review your rules of engagement about how you keep yourselves alive when murderers try to come and kill you. 
we're talking about terrorism, and I think that we need to make sure that we re remember that. And this week, an IDF officer was killed by a PA security officer, one that is supposed to be keeping terrorism at bay. And in response to that murder and that terrorist attack, Fatah, who is in, ch in control of the Palestinian Authority, officially said, we are returning to terrorism and we support this murder, this terrorist attack. That's who Israel's dealing with. Exactly. And that's Even including the, Mahmoud Abbas, the head of it all. Exactly. Supports it. Yep, officially. They're officially returning to that policy. So in conclusion, yes, there have been waves of terror here in Israel, particularly this spring was one of the biggest waves of terror when 19 Israelis were killed in terrorist attacks. Thankfully, the IDF has started an operation called... Um, break the wave, right, uh, to clean out terrorism in here, specifically here in northern Samaria. Um, and they've been very successful. And in response, you know, as a result of that, we've seen very few deaths and uh, terrorist attacks in the last few months. So thankfully, the IDF is doing what it needs to do to root out terrorism where they need to do it. But uh, as supporters of Israel, guys, you should support Israel's military. You should support their government. You should support Israel's right to defend themselves and to be sovereign in their own land no matter what your own government says, no matter what the United States says, if you're in a different country, no matter what your government says, you need to do what's right and stand up for Israel. Guys, don't forget to go to blessedbyisrael.com, blessed, B-U-Y-Israel.com. Click the link below. Join the Heartland Challenge by committing to purchase certain products only from small businesses in Judea and Samaria, and they make it super easy by shipping those products directly to your door. Make sure to subscribe, get that conversation going down below in the comment section. Tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We're here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.